Since the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine is a frequent topic that in addition to the weapons that had been already handed over Ukraine also needs western fighter jets. European countries received permission of the United States in early autumn of 2023, which makes possible the delivery of F-16 fighter jets. Let's find out how useful they can be. Even before the approval was given, mostly extreme opinions flooded the internet. Many people treat the F-16 fighter jets as a miracle weapon that will dominate the airspace. On the other end of the scale, those who are saying that the F-16s are used as junk. As usual, the truth lies somewhere in between. In the first step, it is necessary to clarify the main threats, what the F-16 have to deal with, this is the first main factor in the equation. The type of task where the F-16 can be utilized depends on the available equipment and weapons. This is the second main factor. This video excludes the assessment of the infrastructural, personal and operational background of the F-16s. It's up to everyone's imagination what they consider realistic. It will be explained what is possible on a tactical level with a certain number of F-16 with certain weapons, then the level of expected risk is determined with a model using many input parameters. The Su-35 and the MiG-23BMs are the highest threat Russian fighter jets because of their long-range engagement capability. Let's start with the latter. The MiG-24 Foxbat is the last dedicated Homeland Air Defense fighter which was ever designed. Its first version entered service during the Cold War at the very end of the 1970s, while the last airframes were manufactured in 1993. Only the upgraded BM variant with the new Zaslan AM radar has the Air 37M missile carrying capability. The backbone of the long range engagement capability is the new radar. The 1.4 meter diameter antenna size and other upgrades provides a 280 km detection range against a 5 square meter radar cross section incoming target. Against receding targets, the detection range is about half 140 km. The radar is able to track targets in ground clutter, it does not have effect on tracking range. The radar system is able to track 24 targets, while 6 targets can be engaged in the same time with Air-37M and Air-77-1 missiles. The MiG-31 is able to carry 4 Air-37M missiles under the fuselage hardpoints and 2 2 Air-77 missiles under the wing hardpoints. The burnout speed of the S-37M missile is Mach 6. Despite being similar in weight and size to the older R-33 missile, the missile's kinematic range increased dramatically. While the predecessor R-33 used proportional guidance during almost its entire trajectory, in contrary, the R-37M approaches the target on a quasi-ballistic trajectory thanks to the advancements in digital technology. Launched from a high altitude, the missile can fly up to 300 km from the launch point even if the endpoint of the trajectory is close to the ground. The maximum distance of target tracking and the moment of the launch is determined by the radar cross-section of the target and the relative speed and heading compared to the MiG. Thanks to the high about Mach 3 terminal phase speed, the missile can hit a target which performing an AG overload maneuver. The radar seeker of the Air 37M missile can track an incoming target with a radar cross section of 5 square meters at a distance of 40 km and a receding target at a distance of 13 km. Until the terminal phase, when the missile onboard radar is not turned on, the launching aircraft guides the missile towards the calculated interception point with mid course guidance correction signals using radio command control. The smaller American MRAM and the Russian Air 77 1 missiles use the same principle. Their engagement zone is smaller, and the radars of the smaller missiles can track targets at a shorter distance due to their antenna size. The Foxon can patrol for up to 5 hours with a single area refueling and up to 7 8 hours with two refuelings. The patrol zone can be approximately 300 km from its home base. These features make the MiG-31BM a very serious threat in long-range area combat. The Sukhoi 35 is roughly the same category in beyond visual range combat with the Air-37M missile as the MiG-31BM. 
at this level of assessment we can consider as the same. When we examine the capability of maintaining air combat patrols with NATO terminology, the BARCAP, the Su-35s also shall be considered. The Sukhoi-30 variants, restricted to Air 77-1 missiles and a handful of Su-27 SM-3 fighters should not be forgotten, but their relevance will be discussed in the extra content. Another category of threats is the surface-to-air missile systems. The detailed presentation of SAMs is a topic for another time, here and now we limit ourselves to the bare minimum. The goal is understanding the most basic tactical boundary conditions which are the foundations of mission planning and risk assessment. The most dangerous long-range homeland air defense system is the S-400, the last iteration of the S-300 family, its original designation was S-300 PM-3. Each S-400 missile battery has its own 360 degree search capable target acquisition radar and the fire control radar. The missile batteries are organized into missile regiments, where each regiment is commanded by the command battery with a long-range target acquisition radar, the latest variant of the Big Bird radar family. Each S-400 missile battery typically has 8 tracked or towed missile launchers, each with 4 missiles. The 486DM missile uses the track wire missile guidance. The position of a target is measured by both the radar and the seeker head of the missile, which are transmitted back to the radar. Following the launch, the missiles fly to the calculated interception point on a quasi ballistic trajectory with minor but continuous trajectory corrections according to the current speed and heading of the target. The maximum engagement range of the missile is 250 km, only the radar horizon and the target's radar cross-section limits the engagement range under 250 km. The other available long-range missile of the S-400 is the 40N6 with an increased 380 km range. Utilization of this kinematic range is strongly dependent on the target's radar cross-section. Against fighters, the real engagement range is far smaller, see later. The missile has its own onboard radar, which tracks the target in terminal phase when the guidance from the fire control radar is not needed anymore. This makes possible, in certain cases, shooting down of targets under the radar horizon. Both of the long-range missile types have about 1200 meters per second average speed relative to ground, this varies only a little depending on the altitude and the range of the interception point. The S-400 is also able to use the shorter range 9M96D missiles. It is also an active radar guided missile like the 40N6 type, but its maximum engagement range is only 120 km and the onboard radar has less tracking range because of the smaller antenna. The 9M96D and the 40N6 missile are carried by the 51P6 launcher vehicle. A single missile battery has 12 target channels it can engage 12 targets with 2 missiles per target. Because only the fire control radar can send the missile guidance signals, the engagement arc is limited to 90 degrees, which is the angle tracking limitation of the radar in a set position. The S-400 batteries can be defended by the Panzer system, which can shoot down incoming missiles and glide bombs outside the tracking zone of the S-400's fire control radar. Typically, but not necessarily, two or four Panzer vehicles defend an S-400 battery. The Panzer has its own target acquisition radar, the fire control is a PESA type radar. The missiles are radio command guided, but thanks to the PESA type radar, the Panzer can track and engage three targets in the same time and one more target can be tracked optically with the camera. The maximum engagement range is 20 km at up to 50 km of altitude. A single vehicle carries 12 missiles in canisters. The Panzer has a pair of 30mm guns, but these are effective only against airplane and helicopter sized targets, they are ineffective against missiles, glide bombs and smaller drones. Besides the S-400, the Army Air Defense has the long-range S-300 V-4 system. Because of the depth of the analysis, we can consider them almost identical to an S-400 in range, reaction time and missile speed, but they have only 6 target and 12 missile channels. Besides the S-300 V-4, the Army has the shorter range book and Thor same families, the relevance of these will be addressed later. A 
fighter jet can be used for many roles in many different ways. Let's see the main sortie types and their relevance. Air to air missions basically can be divided in the defensive and offensive role. The defensive role can be executed in two very different ways. The first is giving ground readiness. A part of the fleet is permanently kept at a certain level of readiness. At the highest level, takeoff is possible within a few minutes from the alarm. Of course, this delay determines the reaction time for a given distance. Another method is continuous patrolling, which creates a barrier in a defined area. This is why called Barkup Barrier Combat Air Patrol. Patrols are typically carried out at a high altitude to reduce the fuel consumption and maximize the patrol time. Ideally, this method is combined with air refueling, but this is currently not expected in Ukraine. In offensive role, a multi-role fighter can be used both in air-to-air -air and air-to-ground tasks. In offensive way, the task of the F-16 could be escorting another strike planes or just pure air-to-air -air missions. The second can mean breaking the Russian bar cap if they are performing this kind of missions at all. This could make room for the Ukrainian strike missions. The strike role is a very wide topic, it covers lots of different kind of missions. It can be closer support against moving targets, and in fact this is one of the hardest tasks. Strike missions against static and previf targets are also in the table, targets can be close or far beyond the front line. Missions against radar guided SAMs are a highly specialized task if we consider the equipment to perform on the highest possible level. The last kind of major strike role is anti-ship, which is not a typical role of an F-16, but it is possible. In fact, thanks to the losses had already suffered, see also the video about sinking of the Moscow cruiser, the Russian Navy is now only patrolling in the vicinity of the Crimean Peninsula under the cover of land-based air defense and the Naval Air Force. The term of F-16 fighter plane shall be narrowed down. In this case, it covers the airframes what the European NATO member states can hand over to Ukraine. These are redundant or will be redundant soon with the transition to the F-35 fighter. These are the single-seat F-16AM and two-seat BM variants of the Viper, which were manufactured in the 1980s. These are mostly known as MLU variants. MLU means mid-life update. These airframes had been modernized during the MLU program, what was initiated in the late 1990s and lasted until the 2020s. From the point of view of the topic, the following upgrades are important and relevant. New modular computer to supplement the computational need of the new and expanded functions. Integration of the GPS navigation system. Upgrade of the ANAPG-66 radar to V2 variant. Thanks to this, the detection range increased by 25%. A MiG-31 size target can be detected from a distance about 110 km. The air-to-ground modes of the radar was also improved to have similar capabilities as the ANAPG-68 of the F-15C variants. Identification of large objects is possible, as well as detection and tracking of moving land vehicles and ships using the ground mapping modes. The cockpit interior of the late 70s was replaced, now the planes are on the same level as the Block 5052 variants. Integration of the MRAM air-to-air -air missile family. A new identification friend on force system was needed to utilize the beyond visual range capability of the new missile. The burst scaling antennas on the nose are part of this system. Countless precision weapons had been integrated since the 90s, see later. Two new hardpoints were added under the engine intake, three different types of containers can be carried on them. Integration of interflight data link with the Link 16 protocol. The airframe was strengthened, the lifespan of the airframe increased to about 8000 hours. Based on the sources, the F-16 AM and BM airframes were at least at the M6 upgrade level already around 2019. Based on these, it can be stated that the fighter jets of Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium and Norway are capable of using almost all of the weapons and additional equipment listed in the chart. Potentially, only these countries can hand over F-16 fighter jets or maybe Poland if they agree to lose a small portion of their later manufactured F-16C Black 50 Plus fleet. 
In terms of strike capability, essentially all major precision guided bombs used in NATO are on the table. The laser guided Payway bomb family, the GPS guided GDAM bomb family, the JSOV and the small diameter gliding bomb. In 2010, the Netherlands ordered 600 SDB bombs, which confirms that that appropriate level of software integration is already available. The GDAM version with deployable wing kit likely is also integrated. The long range capable glide bombs are the most important from the PGMs. The features of the F 16AM makes the real difference between, for example, a tweaked MiG 29 with JDAM or glide bomb. The utilization of any kind of Western air launch munition is on a different level used from an F 16. From the missiles, the AGM 88 Harm and the AGM 158 are important, their range makes suitable their use. The importance of the AGM-48 Harpoon anti-ship missile is very low because of most of the potent ships on the Black Sea had been sunk or disabled. It is also possible to carry the ADM-160 MALD decoy drone. It has been tested on upgraded F-16s more than 50 years ago. The decoy is still in production. After 380 km of flying, the decoy still can be airborne for another 50 minutes and imitate a target. Without utilizing its loitering feature, it can fly in total 900 km. However, it is necessary to be aware that none of the four potential F-16 suppliers acquired most of the listed equipment, such as the GSOV, the AGM-158 and the MALD decoys. Only the United States could provide them if there is a political willing to do so. Likely the most important upgrade in self-defense capability is the AN Ailey 50 TOW decoys, which are integrated into the pylons above the Embraer missile on the 2 and 8 hardpoints. It could be effective against Russian radar-guided missiles. Some European countries integrated special pylons, which the United States Air Force did not. Such equipment is the PIDS pylon, it contains dispenser cartridges, but their significance is low. Against modern radar-controlled SAMs, the chef is obsolete, having more flares is meaningless because of the general tactical situation. Close combat is simply not expected. At the same time, single-use active radio decoys exist, what can be launched from cartridges. Such new tool is the Bright Cloud decoy, but this is far from being widespread. The ECIPS and ECIPS Plus pylons provide additional jamming capability besides the ALQ 184 or 131 jammer ports that can be carried under the centerline hardpoint. The new jamming system is the AN ALQ 162V6. The ECIPS Plus pylon has an additional feature, a missile approach warning system. It uses infrared cameras to detect the heat of the infrared emission of the incoming missiles. The maximum capabilities of any handed over F-16 airframe depend on what is transferred from the integrated weapons and equipment and the availability of the Link-16 data link. The data link ensures far better situational awareness. Information from reconnaissance assets of the NATO and US units can be utilized quicker compared to the speech in radio communication. Now we are familiar enough to judge the maximum potential of the available F-16s and the threats. Using this, in the following episode, we can see the limits and imaginable use of the F-16s in certain tactical situations, then we can judge the impact of the planes on tactical and strategic level. If you like the video, you can share, like, subscribe or ring the bell and follow the channel. You can support it via Patreon for exchange for early access, voting on planned topics and extra content and updates about the projects. So far 8 extra contents have been released, their descriptions are in the link under the video.